All right, let's uh, talk about project management. All right, so that's, that's exactly what we're doing with Jira. Right? Jira is a tool that allows us to manage uh, projects. And uh, so first of all, what is a project? It's, a, you know, it's just basically a, you know, it's all sorts of sequence, a sequence of, uh, uh, of tasks that we have identified uh, that uh, together need to be executed to, uh, to bring to completion some or deliver some product uh, within a, you know, some uh, specified uh, requirements that to make somebody happy, you know, they're, they're looking for to, to have something uh, delivered for, for them, and, you know, within a particular budget, within a particular time frame, uh, and all the monitoring and, um, and, and verification and uh, uh, that uh, we indeed are trying to, we're actually progressing uh, to a, a successful conclusion. Uh, now there's all sorts of, um, there's all sorts of activities during a, a project, project management. Uh, of being able to first decide on what it is that we're going to be working on, you know, scoping out and determining what the task is going to be doing, what the, the, the staffing and who's going to be, uh, you know, who do we have to uh, 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 bring on board to, to the team that has specific skills that, uh, you know, we need folks that know how to program in Vue, some folks that need how to program in Node.js, you know, whatever skills that might need, you know, we have to staff these folks, uh, you know, all, the, all the organization, all the planning and how to measure the progress and the methodology that we're going to fo follow. Uh, but at the end, really the three things that are focused is that you know, we, want, we want to be able to deliver something that is, uh, is acceptable to somebody who's paying for this, uh, that uh, is within a particular budget, uh, uh, financial budget, and within a particular time budget. Right, so those those three things. And, there's, uh, there's, uh, and some of these uh, are, uh, you know, they pull their own way, that uh, there's some compromises uh, that uh, you need that that, you, that we might to make, need to make uh, based on how much time we have, uh, the how much uh, how much money do we have, you know, what kind of quality do you have, and depending on the uh, juggling these three or four uh, various components, uh, we might need to compromise on on one of these, right? B based on the the kinds of resources that we have, we certainly don't have infinite time or infinite resources, so we need to make do with whatever we do have. Uh, Brooks Law. Just as a, a funny note, uh, you know, uh, if, if your project is already late, right, uh, just throwing more more folks at a, at a at a project won't make it any any less uh, uh, any less um, late. You know, you'll probably make it even later than what than what it already already was. Uh, so there's no there's you no know, once you're late, that's it. You just need to some you know manage expectations. Uh, some uh, some 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 indications of uh, that a project was successful is that uh, that uh, whatever you do deliver is acceptable to the users who you deliver it to, uh, within the, the timeline and budget constraints that the stakeholders might have given you, and that uh, you've had some minimum uh, level of disruption on the organization. You know, you, you, you'll certainly will will be meeting with all sorts of folks that uh, are running the business while. Uh, they need to meet with you uh, to to focus on something in the future. It'll be very expensive meetings since you're disrupting their time of being productive. Um, you know, why why projects fail? We talked about it a little bit uh, earlier. Uh, you know, this, this uh, management sometimes does not commit, or they don't have the right methodology, or if they do have the methodology, they don't actually follow that methodology, and they they tend to ask for more. You know, as they as they uh, uh, you know as they see the product evolving, they might have new ideas or, or there might be changes in the requirements, uh, you know, trying to adapt in, the, in a particular industry. Uh, some of the causes of uh, failure, you know, that uh, we, might, we might not understand the, the, the domain uh, well enough and, and we commit early and we're not, we're not aware of the risks that are involved into what, wherever we're committing, uh, whether it's a, maybe a new technology or we don't have the competent uh, managers uh, or the competent methodology to, uh, to, to deliver. Uh, some of the activities at the beginning, you'll you'll have a lot of scope negotiation, the deciding of what the schedule is going to be, uh, that we're going to deliver certain things in a particular phases uh, or a particular quarter, uh, that uh, we might decide that you know well, let's focus on the you know most uh, on the minimum value valuable product, you know, and deliver that in the first in the first quarter, and then you know uh, focus on some of the nice to have features in the in the second or third quarter. And negotiating, you know, with the, the the timeline that we're going to be delivering these things, uh, identifying the, the all the tasks that need to be uh, in, um, executed and how long they're going to take. And this estimation, of, obviously, is uh, the, the longer you're be, we're being asked to estimate uh, something into the future, the more the less uh, the less accurate it's going to be. The the more the the high, the bigger the cone of uh, 
uh, of uncertainty will be. Uh, also deciding what things need to be implemented in which order, that uh, we can't start work on certain things before we have certain other things. So, so all those dependencies uh, that, that uh, certainly um, more experienced engineers will know what those dependencies are in which, you know, in the particular order that things need to execute. Uh, also find the folks to, to work on this and, the, and to monitor and see uh, the, and evaluate the, the health of the, of the project. What, um, some of the tools that folks that uh, project managers use are you know, work breakdown structure where they, they, they can break out you know, large amounts of work into ever uh, more uh, uh, smaller chunks that can then be uh, broken down into something very granular that can be worked out in a, in a day or two. You know, something that, that uh, is worth uh, you know, several years of work, how to break it down into something that can, that can I tell you to work on today. Uh, so work breakdown structures allow you to do that. Uh, other tools are like per CPM and, and uh, per, per charts and Gantt charts uh, of looking and you know, graphically looking at all these tasks in a, in a uh, timeline. So first of all, project scoping is the, uh, the, you know, the, the, the task of, um, of breaking down large projects into smaller uh, bytes uh, that uh, can, be, uh, can be tackled uh, by, by an individual or two. Um, so here's an example of, start, of breaking out something as huge such as a project into the many different pieces. Uh, you know, for, for, to, to build a project, we will certainly have to identify the business requirements, the system requirements, the development deliverables, right? setting up a repository, setting up all sorts of the, the infrastructure. So those are all big chunks that we need to, need to happen, which then break down into smaller, smaller chunks, right? um, into ever smaller individual uh, tasks that can, might be taken uh, by an individual that, that, can, that can actually implement that in a day or two, right? but all, always starting with something huge. So work, 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 um, work breakdown structure is, is useful to identify these tasks. Uh, then obviously negotiate depending on, on any constraints that the uh, company might have on time on, or financial uh, budgets uh, and, and, and all the uh, um, different um, uh, compromises that they'll need to do versus quality you know, and, and uh, depending on how much time you have and the money that you have and the resources that you have. Uh, with, with all this, the project manager takes this, all, all this into account and writes up a formal a, a, a statement of work that narrates right, what it's going to actually going to be delivered, what the scope it is, and, and what any, any milestones on when things are going to be expected to be delivered in a particular quarter and whatnot. Um, and, and now, now to be able to, to do this, they'll, they'll need to um, you know, estimate uh, on the task and how much, how, how long their things are going to take. Uh, first, they'll, they'll need to identify what they are, you know, using the work breakdown uh, structure, and, you know, estimating uh, how long they're going to take, whether it's going to take a day or two, and then assign it to folks, uh, depending on whatever, whatever effort uh, or complexity um, of, of that particular task. Um, there's several different ways of, uh, of estimating. Uh, one way is to use an order of magnitude where you compare uh, two different tasks and say you know, that uh, one particular task is twice as hard as some other task, right? or, 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 or 10 times as hard, or, or some order of magnitude harder than others. And you can do it, you know, a pair comparison, of, you know, uh, one, comparing one against another. Uh, also, depending on the time, timeline that you're asking, you know, whether you're asking me to estimate something that I, I need to deliver today, or deliver something next week, or next month, or next year, and obviously, the, the, my accuracy will become much more rougher uh, for things that are way, way into the future. Uh, so so you know, we might ask for a rough estimate or something that's more fair estimate that I can, I can give you when the, when the deliverable is much closer. Uh, so a rough estimate is typically considered to be, you know, I, I could, you know, whatever I tell you, you know, plus or minus 50%, right? So within, within that range. And usually we talk about ranges. You know, it's a, it's a, That'll take me around two to three months to do that, right? And we we'll give them best, uh, you know, a, a best case scenario, a worst case scenario, and my best guess of what it might be. Um, and we always provide ranges. Uh, typically, in the, in the estimation process, typically we might ask a, 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 a we might ask a, the actual person who is going to be t taking on this particular task how much do they think they're going to take they're, they're going to uh, take to do uh, a particular task. Now that person might be uh, you know, over optimistic or over pessimistic, uh, and oftentimes the project manager's job is to be more pessimistic than whatever the developer tells them to do, 
uh, tells them. So if they tell them a week, you know, the, the project manager can be safe to say, okay, well, I'll give you two weeks to do it, right? Uh, and you know, just, just, just taking into account the fact that this is a very inexact science, uh, oftentimes we ask not just one person, we might, we might ask multiple people, right? And, uh, and then do some weighted average on, uh, on what, what, uh, what different folks might tell us. Uh, and also, we'll, you know, we'll ask them what the level of complexity or size of the problem might do. Typically, we like to break down things that we can expect someone to be able to complete in a day or two, right? That we can't be much more granular than that, you know, down to the hour. Uh, you know, a day or two is, uh, is fine as a granularity. Uh, oftentimes, we, 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 we ask uh, the judgment of, of uh, what we consider to be experts in a particular field, and maybe just not one expert, multiple experts, and, and then we weight average their, their, um, uh, their, their, um, their estimates. Uh, or we, we might create some analogy uh, on some previous uh, jobs that we might have worked on that are somewhat similar to what it is that we're building, and then you know, some, uh, it, makes, uh, it makes some estimations based on that. It says, well, I know I worked on something similar. It took me a month to do that. Well, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, we could probably expect that uh, in this project. Or create some kind of model where we can list all the artifacts that need to be built. We need to create all these tables. We need to create all these primary keys. We need to do all, the, all these indices. We need to create all these, all these, uh, all these um, uh, user interfaces and, and all these services and data models and repositories. And then assign you know, a particular uh, complexity to them. And then add up all that work and, then, and, and create a model that can give us an estimate of how much it could take. Uh, all, all, uh, a couple of other uh, factors that we need to take into account is, uh, is the efficiency of folks, right? Folks are, 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 are not, you know, we're humans. Uh, we're not perfect. We're not expected to work 100% all the time. We, uh, you know, we're, we're, we are, humans are messy. Uh, we have messy lives. We have a, a life outside of work. We have families. People get sick. Uh, we get discouraged. We have all sorts of things that uh, the project manager needs to keep into account. Uh, and you know, usually, a, 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 a project manager will will, um, uh, will estimate that they'll have you, you know, around 50 to 75 percent of the time, and that's as much as they can expect from you. Um, also, different folks have different competencies, right? Different levels. Some folks are junior. Some folks are senior. And so we need to take that into account. And, and, and also consider that, that, that some of these tasks are, are much harder. You, know, you, 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 you might give a task to someone uh, or some other task to someone else, and, and it just might be harder for someone to, 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 uh, to work at it. So certainly project managers take that into account. Uh, to, oftentimes they, they'll, they'll ask folks for you know, what's the optimistic effort of a particular uh, um, uh, a ticket, and what's the optimistic and pessimistic, and what is your best guess. You know, that, that falls somewhere in between. And then we calculate some average of all those three different types of estimates to come up with, a, with, a, with an average estimate. Uh, or we might uh, have folks in a meeting like this and ask folks to vote right, on, on, um, on uh, private ballots or vote anonymously on what they think it might take. And you'll have some nice, perhaps, uh, uh, bell distribution of folks telling you how much they expect it to be. Uh, and, and, and then you identify the, the edge cases, the folks that voted too low or too high, and have them fight it out, right? And, and ideally come to a consensus of what actual uh, effort uh, that, might, that might be. Uh, Agile looks to, um, to use a much leaner uh, or um, uh, approach at planning. They might uh, uh, use uh, like a deck of cards that um, number from 1 to 9, or modify Fibonacci, you know, 1, 3, 5, 9, 13, 32, uh, where folks can vote at, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a planning party, and, and then, you know, have the folks that voted highest and lowest to fight it out and come to a consensus. Uh, project planning, uh, we're looking to, uh, to identify, you know, what needs to get done first, and how they might have some dependencies on one another, that you can't start one thing before you finish something else or things need to start at the same time or finish at the same time. And there's all sorts of dependencies there. Uh, and, uh, and then there's different types of scheduling. You know, once you have identified what needs to be done, you know, depending on whether you have a hard dateline that you need to deliver something, or if you have a hard set of scopes of things that need to be delivered, there's different strategies. For instance, if somebody tells you that you know, the minimum amount of, of features is set in stone and you cannot change that, Typically, you, you would use what is called forward scheduling. 
you know, knowing that we need to build all these things, you know, I, I'll estimate that we'll end up delivering this by the sometime next year, you know, in the middle of next year. Uh, instead, if somebody tells you, you know, that we have to deliver this by the end of the year because to hit the holidays, uh, and you have a hard line, then perhaps you might use what's called a reverse scheduling mechanism, right, where you start, you know, kind of working your way back and say, well, if we need to be done by December, that means that we need uh, one month for, for testing, you know, we need another month but before that uh, for acceptance testing, we need another month before that for doing, for doing bug uh, uh, and hardening uh, and bug fixes and whatnot, right? Uh, so, and then you work your way back and, and then say, well, given the amount of time that we're left over, this is how much we can deliver by the end of the year, right? Uh, so, so usually uh, folks use both, both strategies to see kind of to, to, to make sure that they, that they con con coincide. Um, once, you, once you've done the planning, you start assigning to different folks. Let's skip all of this. Uh, and, uh, and start perhaps creating Gantt charts and, uh, and PERT, PERT charts to graphically see what all the dependencies are and what's, what's happening and what, uh, at, uh, in, in what order and who is assigned to doing each one of these things. Uh, PERT allows you to identify the, uh, what, what is the m most important thing that you need to work on. For instance, uh, this allows you to set up all the different activities in a particular order that they need to occur and identify the longest, uh, the longest path in this, uh, in this diagram that, is, uh, that uh, is the most critical path. Right? That if anything uh, um, fails in any one of those nodes, in any one of those activities, it could per jeopardize the, the entire project delivering at, uh, on schedule. Uh, there might be other things happening in tandem that if they are late, it doesn't matter, but things that are in the critical path, you know, those are definitely uh, things that uh, we need to take care of. Okay. All right, let's leave it here.